Hey, welcome everyone. In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to buy the right HDMI cable for your needs. So whether you have a basic setup or a complicated setup, this video will help teach you how to get through and everything and get you sorted out. Now, if you wanna see the written version of this video, you can find a link to my website in the video description. Now, let's give a unique situation such as mine and why choosing the right HDMI cable can be complicated, but also explain how it can be pretty simple. So in my situation, I need an HDMI cable that is version 2.1, using fiber optic and 48 gigabits per second. Sounds pretty complicated, right? Especially for those of you that are not tech savvy, you're probably thinking, wait, hold on a second. Fiber optic and an HDMI cable, don't use that for network connectivity. And hold on, there are version numbers for HDMI cables. And not only that, there are data throughput bandwidth limitations. The answer to all those are yes. There are all those things that I have to consider in my unique situation. But let's backtrack a little bit in where most people fall in line and it's usually a very simple setup because most standard TVs nowadays, at least as of this video posting, uses 4K and 120 hertz refresh rate. Now if you're not sure what either of those are, 4K or what refresh rate is, I'll put links to those videos, uh, a playlist explaining TV technology. In that playlist I explain what is 4K and why 8K is pretty useless due to pixels per inch density, and then as well, what is refresh rate. So you can watch those in separate videos. But most people fall in those situation, 4K, 120 hertz refresh rate. But depending on your situation, you might not even have to buy an HDMI cable. For example, if you buy a certain video game console, Blu-ray player, and it comes with an HDMI cable in the box with your video game console, whatever it may be, just use that cable and you're fine. They've designed that cable to get the maximum capability of whatever your device is. Okay, so we've covered the basics where you're pretty much set and good to go for most people. But what about the complicated and confusing situation of the various HDMI cables? Well, let's continue back to my real life example and why I had to buy such a unique cable. So my family and I recently moved into this house and we're the second homeowners. The original homeowner had told the home builder that where the TV would mount above the fireplace mantle, they want a conduit there. And that conduit runs into the basement. And then from the basement, you then run your cables down and up another conduit on another side of the family room so that you have perfect cable management because there you could put your video game console, media players, whatever you want. That's where the fiber optic comes in as well as the 40 gigabits per second and HDMI 2.1, which I'm gonna explain all that now. So the greater the HDMI version number is, the better the HDMI technology supports, right? Kind of like software, when you get a new software, the bigger the version number is, the better the software will be. Except, maybe the one exception I can think of is app services from like Twitter, aka X. We can thank a certain someone for ruining that service. So the first consumer level HDMI version number that was very popular was HDMI 1.4 which only supported 4K at 30 hertz refresh rate. Right now, what's really popular as of this video recording is HDMI 2.1, which supports 4K at 120 hertz refresh rate or 8K at 60 hertz. Now, there are a bunch of other HDMI version cables that were very popular with consumers between version 1.4 and 2.1. I'll just put it up on this PowerPoint slide. Thankfully, I was not affected by the CrowdStrike outage here at home, so I was able to get PowerPoint working on my Windows. Yahoo! As of this video recording, HDMI 2.1 will do for most people. You'll, it might be actually be overkill for you, to be honest, but because it's rather expensive, like here in Canada, a six-foot cable will go for about $20, so in the US, it's between, I don't know, $12 to $15. It's rather inexpensive. If you're looking to future-proof something and you're not sure if this is overkill, there's no harm in getting it. Again, it's not that expensive. The next concept we're gonna talk about is data transfer rates over HDMI cables. You see, because HDMI cables are transferring audio and video, it's data. And the more data you can pass through, chances are the higher the quality of the video and audio can pass through as well. Again, I'm gonna simplify things by putting up another PowerPoint presentation here. There are three primary standards to know when it comes to data transfer rates. There are much more benefits that come with higher transfer rates of HDMI cables, such as advanced color sampling information. But again, that's going beyond the scope of what this video is designed for. This video you're watching now is designed for the everyday folk now here's the big problem with buying HDMI cables when it comes to buying the right data transfer rate information. Is that a lot of sellers will have the incorrect information and just made up mumbo jumbo. It's confusing. I do blame the HDMI standard for this because their naming convention is awful. All of them reference something along the lines of high speed. So when you buy something from Amazon, eBay, wherever, you might see some random gibberish mention like high speed HDMI, ultra speed, fast speed, 
It's all just mumbo jumbo fluff. It's very confusing for the consumer and understandably so. Now, one way to tell if something is high speed or ultra high speed, like it's legitimate basically based on the naming alone is if you can find something from the HDMI administrator in which they have like their own official seal of approval for HDMI cables. They'll have like a QR code you can kind of find on some packets. That's your way of knowing that, yep, this is officially certified ultra high speed data transfer rate cable in an HDMI form. HDMI cable distance. Now, this is an interesting one. And again, it's something I'm subject to in my unique situation. Here's the thing, like most cables that transfer data, the longer the distance, the higher the chance there is of quality being lost or the signal just being dropped out completely. HDMI cables are no exception to this situation. Now, in most people's cases, you're gonna be okay because anything that's within 15 feet or less, chances of you losing signal quality loss or some sort of interference, really slim, really low. When you're diving into the world of beyond 15 feet, so like 20, 25 feet in my situation, that's where you have to get something rather unique to help support your device's signal. There are two ways to achieve uh, extending the signal of your HDMI cable. The first one is getting some sort of like repeater device. You have your HDMI cable, connector box in the middle, it then powers the signal and sends it off to another HDMI cable in the middle. This is very popular when it comes to home theater setups or board conference rooms with projectors. In my situation, I decided to use an active cable. Um, I chose to go with fiber optic. Fiber optic provides crazy extended signal. Um, in my situation, I have no issues whatsoever. And the plus side is I don't need a repeater box in the middle. I was able to use that single 25 foot cable and it works just great. Actually, my cable is 35 feet. I got extra slack on purpose just in case. Even at 35 feet, no problem whatsoever. Although these cables are pretty expensive at about $100 each Canadian, okay? The only thing you have to be cautious about when it comes to fiber optic HDMI cables or any fiber optic cable for that matter, is that you don't wanna bend the cable at such a sharp angle. Anything beyond 90 degrees bend in a fiber optic cable, you're risking the little glass strands in the fiber optic cable of breaking and then thus ruining your signal permanently. You have to get another cable. What about audio? There's two forms of audio technology to be of interest. One is ARC, which I just call ARC, or EARC, which I just call EARC. ARC, or ARC, is short for Audio Return Channel. You see, with the early stages of HDMI cables, it could not allow audio. You had a single HDMI cable for video, and then a separate cable for your audio. That's no longer a concern right now because it is almost impossible to find an HDMI cable that cannot support audio. It's just become standard. So where you might be interested in more functionality is EARC or EARC, which stands for Enhanced Audio Return. It provides, of course, audio over an HDMI cable as well as video, but far more bigger advancements when it comes to audio technology. And with eARC, it allows greater bandwidth of superior audio technology such as DTS HD Master Audio, DTS X, Dolby True HD, and Dolby Atmos. Lastly, what about HDMI cable brand name? Now, when it comes to just everyday use, just 1080p or 4K 60 hertz refresh rate, those are pretty basics, will suit anyone. Honestly, you can even get away with cables from Amazon Basics, their in-house made brand. There are two very popular brands here in Canada and US, and heck, they might even be available other parts of the world, but in Canada and US specifically, the number one that comes to mind is Monoprice. In fact, Monoprice is very well known, not just for HDMI cables, they're probably more well known for networking cables like ethernet cables. Uh, I'm not affiliated with Monoprice or the next company I'm gonna mention. This is just my neutral opinion as a consumer myself. The next one that I use for my HDMI cables is RuPro. Uh, RuPro, okay, or is it RuiPro? RuiPro, you know, whatever, the spelling's there, whatever. RuPro, if I said that correctly, is kind of a niche brand. They're well known to make just very unique HDMI cables like my situation. I can vouch it works fine for me. I have three of them running. In my testing, they all work fantastic when I pulled the cables through myself and it works just as it should be. So you are now kind of an expert in HDMI cables. You kind of know what to get and I hope you found this video useful. If you did, be sure to check out my social links and website link in the video description. Hit the like button, it does help. Subscribe and thanks for watching.